Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about transcription, translation, and protein synthesis. Before I start the topic, first I'm going to give you the brief idea about the DNA. DNA is a double-stranded molecule, as you can see here. So basically, the DNA has four nucleotide bases. What are those four nucleotide bases? These are adenine A, guanine Z, cytosine C, and thymine T. Whereas RNA is a single-stranded molecule. This is this structure here is the structure of RNA, which is a single-stranded molecule. So, uh, so the so the, the bases of RNAs are adenine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Okay. So now we have a DNA molecule as shown here. Okay. So this this have a look at this example here. I will show you how from DNA. Uh, the transcript of the RNA, messenger RNA, is synthesized, okay? So first, look at the structure of the DNA. We have, this is the DNA from this, the strand is from 5 prime to 3 prime end, and this is from 3 prime uh, to uh, 3 prime to 5 prime end, okay? So, this strand is called temporal strand. The strand, which is from 3 prime to, uh, to 5 prime direction, this is called temporal strand, whereas this strand is called coding strand, okay? So what happens is that during the process of transcription, transcription is we get RNA from the DNA. So what happens? This this strand, this three prime to five prime uh, strand will be used as a template strand. Okay. Uh, so RNA polymerase will bind, and if you use this this strand as a template strand, and it will start to add the nucleotide bases. Okay. What will be the nucleotide bases? Look at this. Uh, a temporal strand okay have a look at this sample strand here t t with a a t because there is a bond between t and a and a will bind with uracil okay because why with uracil why not with t because in in the rna molecule we have uracil in place of thymine okay thymine is present in the in the dna so hence so it will add uracil and C will bind to Z, T will bind to A, and A will bind to U, okay? So A will U and Z to C and A to U, okay? This is very important, guys, you need to understand, okay? So A, U, Z, A, U, C, U, and finally, so what will be our transcript? So our transcript will be A and U, this is Z, this is A, U, uh, and then like this this is our transcript for example z is this z is c and c is z and a is u and t is a and a okay this is our transcript so i will again explain it here we have a dna 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 structure here dna sequence let's say we want to take this segment of the dna let's call it a gene okay so then what will happen this during the transcription process, this 3 prime to 5 prime end, this is called temporal strand. Whereas 5 prime to 3 prime 1, this is called a coding strand. So this temporal strand, 3 prime to 5 prime end, so we have to focus here, this 3 prime, three prime uh, to 5 prime strand. Okay, just focus here. And then you have a look closely. T, okay, T, in, T, it will be converted into A, okay, because we want to synthesize RNA. So T will be converted into A. A will be converted into uracil, yeah, and why uracil, why not thymine? Normally, it binds with thymine in, in, in the DNA. Look here, this is a DNA structure, but this 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 molecule this molecule that we are synthesizing is an RNA. So, therefore, U and C, uh, we, will, we will have Z and T, we will have A, A, we will have U and Z to C and A to U. And finally, we will have this RNA transcript, okay? So, from this DNA, DNA segment, we will get this RNA transcript, okay? So this process is called transcription, right? This is a transcription process. Okay, so then yes, from DNA to RNA, this is called transcription. And now um, from this transcript, so what protein, protein or the polypeptide will be synthesized? So basically three nucleotide, if you look AUZ, this is one codon, right? So this AUZ, it codes for methionine, whereas AUC, it codes uh, for uh, this ILE and then finally um, we have so basically AUC and UCG it goes for serine okay so isoleucine ILE is isoleucine okay so basically methionine isoleucine and serine but you might be wondering what happened to UAA UAA is a stop codon so it doesn't code for anything so hence the translation will be stopped 
So this is translation. Okay. So I hope I was able to explain you. So before I go into the details of this video, AUZ, it's a one codone, right? It codes for methionine and AUC, it codes for isoleucine and we have UCZ, it codes for serine. So finally, this will be the peptide that will be obtained. So this is the protein that will be obtained from this DNA a segment, okay? So this process is called central dogma of molecular biology. So from where DNA, the, the masses in the DNA is converted into the masses in the RNA. And finally, this RNA is translated into the protein. So from RNA to protein is called translation, okay? So, so this is a general overview of today's lecture, okay? So now I will go into the details. So what is transcription uh, and why it is important? Because proteins are produced in the cytoplasm of the cell, okay? Our ribosome is present in the, in the, in the cytoplasm and the, in the cytoplasm, ribosome is the place where protein synthesis occurs, right? And you all know that DNA never leaves the nucleus, okay? DNA is nuclear, it, it does not leave the nucleus. So then how the masses from DNA will be converted into the protein? So to get around this problem, so DNA creates a messenger molecule, okay? DNA creates a messenger molecule to deliver its information outside of the nucleus. And this messenger molecule is called messenger RNA or mRNA, okay? So the process of making this mRNA or the messenger RNA molecule is called transcription. And it has a number of steps. So what are those? First, step is initiation okay so transcription begins with the initiation step so what happens the double helix of the dna is unwound by rna polymerase which docks on the dna at a special sequence of basis and that special sequence of basis is called promoter okay so what happens we have a rna polymerase this rna polymerase will bind to the promoter region okay to the promoter region of 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 the dna molecule so this promoter is actually a Tata box, which is present 25 basis upstream of the transcription start site. Okay, so what happens during the initiation? During the initi initiation, the RNA polymerase binds to the promoter. Yeah, upstream of the target scene, upstream of the target scene. Right, and what happens after that? Then after that, the next step is the elongation. RNA polymerase moves downstream, unwinding the DNA. And as the double helix unwinds, ribonucleotide bases A, C, Z, and U attach themselves to the DNA template strand, the strand being copied by complementary base pairing. Okay, like I explained earlier, we have a DNA molecule here. This is this is our coding coding strand, and this is our template strand. So the so from three prime to five prime end, so this strand will be used as a template strand by the RNA polymerase for the synthesis of RNA, um, RNA molecule. So then what will happen? So then, then it will start to add ribonucleotide bases. So basically T, A will be added to T, U will be added to A. I explained why. Because in RNA, we have uracil in place of thymine. But in DNA, we have thymine. Okay. And Z will be added to C, A to T, and so on and so forth. And finally, we will obtain this RNA transcript. Okay. So this is the elongation process. In elongation, this nucleotide, the, uh, the DNA double helix is unwound and this nucleotide, private nucleotide bases are added to the DNA template strand, okay, in the elongation step, right. And then what happens is that this RNA polymerase, it catalyzes the formation of covalent bonds between the nucleotides. In the wake of transcription, DNA strands recoil into double helix, okay. So, and finally, what will happen is that the RNA transcript, the RNA transcript will be released from the DNA along with the RNA polymerase enzyme. Okay, so this is the termination step. In the termination step, RNA transcript is released from the DNA along with the RNA polymerase enzyme. So, and so what is the, then the next step in, in, the, in the transcription? The next stage in transcription is addition of 5' cap and a poly A tail. These sections of the complete RNA molecule are not translated into the protein, but they are really important uh, to protect the mRNA molecule from degradation, to help the mRNA molecule to leave the nucleus, and also to anchor the mRNA to the ribosome during translation. That's why 5' cap 
and polyethyl polyadenylation and 5 prime capping of the RNA molecule is important. So eukaryotic pre mRNAs messenger RNAs they, they have to go through several additional processing steps before translation occur because now even after the addition of this polyethyl and 5 prime cap these these molecules are not uh, um, uh, do not directly go into the translation. First, what happens the, after having the, they will have to have a 5 prime cap of course and 3 prime polyethyl and then these pre, pre mRNAs will be subject to splicing in eukaryotic organism. So what is splicing? In splicing, the non-coding sections of the pre-mRNA, pre-mRNA introns are cut out and the coding sections, the exons are effectively glued together. Okay, so what is this? So here, so we have a pre-mRNA molecule. It, have, it has a, there is a addition of 5' prime cap and there is also polyadenylation of 3' prime tail, right? So then what will happen? So we have here, this is introns. This, this part is intron and this is exons. Exons are the coding sections, whereas introns are the non-coding sections. What will happen? In the splicing, after the splicing, these introns will be removed and we will have mature messenger RNA. Okay, after the splicing, we will have mess mature messenger RNA, which has five prime, of course, five prime cap and three prime polyethyl. This, this mature messenger RNA is then able to leave the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm where translation occurs. Okay, this is very important, guys. So this messenger RNA is leaves the nucleus and enters the cytoplasm where translation occurs. Where it occurs? Where, where the translation occurs? It occurs in the ribosome. Okay, fine. Now, so what happens is that a we have a tRNA molecule during translation. What, how would the translation happen? We have a tRNA molecule that is a transfer RNA. So this tRNA molecule has anticodons. So what are these anticodons as shown here? UCC. For example, this is ACG is a is is codon that is present in the messenger RNA. So exactly complementary to this, we have the anticodon in tRNA molecule. So basically, this tRNA molecule will bind to this um, codon. Why? Because this has anticodon. That means A, U against A, Z against C, and C against Z. So this can bind. This tRNA molecule can bind, can interact with this messenger RNA molecule. And another important thing is that it has amino acid cysteine attached to it. So basically, from this codon, we will get the amino acid cysteine. Okay? So. These are codons and that is anticodon. So in the ribosome, what happens? Each messenger RNA molecule interacts with the tRNA. Okay, what, how it, it interacts? So these tRNAs, they have anticodons. These codons are complementary. These anticodons of the tRNA are complementary to the codon in the mRNA strand. And then there will be the interaction. Okay, and following this interaction, so this amino acid, corresponding amino acid, will be coded by this sequence. That's why it's called coding sequence. So like the transcription, in translation also we have three steps. Okay, first step is initiation. Like I explained earlier, translation occurs in the ribosome. Ribosome is present in the cytoplasm or also in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Yeah, the translation process occurs. So this ribosome has large subunit and small subunit. So basically it has two subunits, large subunit and small subunits. And the ribosome also has three active sites, E, A, and P. Okay, these are the active sites present in the ribosome. So we have here, this is this is the tRNA molecule and this is the AUZ, this is the start codon. If you look here, A, U is complementary to A and U to a and Z to C, right? So basically this tRNA molecule can bind to this, interact with this because its anticodon is complementary to the AUZ present here, right? So hence it will, the methionine, this, you know, this, uh, uh, this will be coated, MET, MET, right? Because this has anticodon complementary to this starting codon, right? Or start codon. So what is the first step in the, in the, uh, what happens then? Okay, we have a tRNA molecule. This tRNA molecule will enter the ribosome through this P site. Okay, the entry of tRNA molecule occurs 
through the P site of the ribosome. Okay, this is very important. Okay, P is peptidal site. Okay, and so how this tRNA molecule will recognize this AUZ because it has anticodon UAC. So A against U, U against A, and Z against C, like I explained earlier. And entry happens through the this site called P. Okay, and after this step, there is an elongation process or elongation step. So what happens? <laughs> what happens is that after this, uh, there is a entry of after this tRNA, it enters um, in this active P site. So then, what will happen is that we will have this uh, associated amino acid here. Okay, and another another tRNA molecule will enter through a uh, through a site. Okay, so after this, what will happen? We we already have this amino acid present here, and when this another tRNA molecule it enters uh, through the a site, then what will happen is that we will have these two amino acids, and these two amino acids they will be linked through this covalent bond. Okay, really important guys. These two amino acids they will be linked through covalent bond. And in the next step, what happens is that this tRNA molecule from the P site, it moves to the E site. Okay. So when the tRNA molecule from P site, it moves to the E site, it leaves the amino acid here. Okay. So yes, and then during this process, there is an elongation of this amino acid chain, right? The amino acid chain will be elongated. And so what what happens then? The RNA molecule in the P site moves to E site, right? And as it happens, it will lose its amino acid. Yes, this tRNA molecule will lose its amino acid and will and we, we will have growing chain of amino acids. So this we will have this growing chain of amino acids, and this amino acid will finally leave or exit the ribosome. Okay, so through through E site. So, uh, sorry, so this, this will leave the ribosome, but this tRNA molecule will leave through E site. Okay. So, the one important thing that you need to understand in the elongation process, what happens? First, there was entry, there is an entry of tRNA molecule through P site, right? After that, there is entry of another tRNA molecule uh, through A site. Then there is a formation of this uh, covalent bond between these amino acids. And after that, what happens is that this tRNA molecule from P site P moves to E site and it leaves the the it will lose it will lose the amino acid. Okay, when this tRNA molecule moves from P site to E site, it will lose the amino acid. Okay, and so as and then we will have this growing chain of amino acids and finally this this tRNA molecule will exit through E site entry through entry of tRNA molecule uh, through P site whereas uh, exit through E site, okay? Entry from here and exit from here. Okay, fine, this is the elongation step. And the final step in the translation process is the termination. Termination begins when stop codon is read. There are three stop codons, that is UAA, UZA, and UAG. So, <clears throat> what happens is that Stop codons are read at A site. Okay, so basically what happens is that the stop codons, okay, so these stop codons they will be read at A site, right? So stop codons are read at A site, and this causes when the this causes this causes the release factors to enter A site. When stop codons are read at A sites, there are release factors. This is a release factor. This release factor will enter A site. Okay. And this entry of release factor into A site causes the disruption or the disassembly of small subunit and large subunit of the ribosome. Okay, and this actually this leads to the end of protein translation. So basically, protein translation will end and protein will leave the ribosome. Okay, so termination. What is termination? There are stop codons. It begins when stop codon is read. There are three stop codons, UAA, UZA, and UAZ. These stop codons are read at A site. When these stop codons are read at A sites, what happens is that this causes the release of this um, 
these these factors release factors so basically this causes these these release factors to enter into the a site when stop codons are read at a site these release factors are release factors they enter into the a site okay and after that they, this the protein will be released from the ribosome and thereby leading to the end of the translation okay so this is termination and so finally now i have a question for you what will be the mrna sequence of the following dna segment please leave your answer in the comment section thank you very much